Now that we have power back, welcome back to some more Stormworks. I'm Stormrunner Gaming, and welcome to this tutor tutorial. Oh, I hit that. Well, apparently I can't see. But today we are back with some more Lua programming, some monitors here in Stormworks, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to put some touchscreen buttons on the monitors for all of your creations. As well, I'm going to be showing you how to create this amazing little thing I've created here. This is a little security system, so we have four different cameras. You can switch between all four different feeds with the four different buttons on screen. But we're actually going to start with that touchscreen tutorial. And once we have that done, I'm going to move on to creating this full thing here. So... The touchscreen stuff in Lua isn't as difficult as you would think. I'm just going to name this our Lua touchscreen module here. And of course, we're going to need a couple different inputs and outputs here. We're going to need a composite input from our touchscreen and then a video output to the screen as well. Let's jump in here. I might be missing a thing or two, but we'll get to that in a minute here. We're also going to need that Lua module here in our microcontroller, so we can plop that down there. And we'll connect up that touchscreen data to the data input with composite and connect the video output here. So we're going to jump right into our Lua script here. And if we jump over to the help menu and scroll down all the way to the bottom, the developers actually have helped us out a little bit with some values showing us how to make touch screens work and this is of course a push button for a touch screen so if you want something to turn on a light with a true or false value an on or off value you have to hold it down for this so it is a touch screen or a push value excuse me and of course it is a touch screen but we can go and just copy all of this here if I can click in copy all of this paste it out here we don't need much of anything that was in here before we can just delete that and now we have a working touchscreen that should output something to our screen that is a click button so let's say we're done with that and save it up as our lua touchscreen here so basics for one button isn't too difficult i'm going to show you that this works right now with a brand new vehicle here and just like other, I guess, monitor created vehicles, we're going to, of course, need a monitor. So I'm going to grab the large one. We're going to need a battery to power everything. Grab a medium one there. And a button as well to turn that monitor on. And that's about all we need to make this stuff work here. So let's plop that monitor right up here with the correct rotations. Get a battery down there and put a toggle button up there. Connecting that toggle button up to the TV and connecting it composite. We actually do need that Lua touchscreen module here. So we can take that and put it down on the ground here and connect it up to the monitor. And then we also need to connect up our video output to that monitor as well. And the last thing we need to do here is give everything a little bit of power and spawn it in. So once we click this button here, we should get a blank screen with one clickable push button there and it is possible to switch it to a toggle button but I'm not gonna go into that today uh, anyways I'm gonna show you guys a little bit about the values that are going behind all of this here so the touchscreen for it if you guys haven't done anything with this don't have any experience creating maps or anything with it yet we have a couple different inputs from the touchscreen itself we have the beginning boolean value on our channel one that is saying that you are clicking the screen you are clicking it somewhere so there is a value coming through even if it isn't in the box you have created and then we have the coordinates on our third and fourth channel here where your actual cursor is we are clicking on that screen so those two are coming in in values three and four and then the comments here actually do help us out a lot the first part of this is asking if you are clicking in that, so it has a AND value here. So if this first value is true, is pressed, so you are clicking somewhere on the screen, and is pointing in a rectangle, 
is true that means your cursor is within these values here then this statement will be told it is true and then that's going to be output in our first boolean channel here and you can do a couple different things with this and i'm going to explain later how you can get multiple buttons here and what you have to do with the output boolean values and then this guy this function right here is basically just it's kind of quarterbacking what's happening up here it's making sure that you are clicking within this rectangle and it's able to set this thing true as far as i know i'm pretty sure that's how it works um i could be wrong on that so don't take my word on it but i'm pretty sure it does something like that because um like i've said in probably other videos now running through different programming languages is a bit weird especially with the plugins and everything they do the um stormworks developers themselves i mean they've done a great job making touchscreen stuff pretty accessible to most people but I'm pretty sure this is just another check for this statement up here. Then that is all the on tick function that is asking if you are clicking the single button there. Then we have our on draw function and this is actually where you see either the box show up or the rectangle when you click it show up. So it's actually got an if then else statement in the on draw function and if you didn't know you can do that you actually can do that for almost anything but i mean it is much more prevalent when you are doing a click button or a push button or something just to show that the button has been pressed i mean you could do it with other input and output values if you wanted to switch something around you can do an if then else statement maybe for camera inputs for different pictures you draw or something but for right now this is just our preliminary thing here so if you are using a different screens you're using a small one a large one whichever one and you want to make this box smaller you have these four different values that you can play with here and you have to switch to them on all three of these for the same box so if we want to make this box a little bit smaller we can make it a five by five wait a minute those are our X and Y's, and this is our length and width, I believe. Yeah, so we just put it at, so, sorry about that. I'm gonna switch that back to 10 and 10 here. And then we're going to make the box a lot smaller. We're gonna make it a five by five box, and I hope this works. I've never actually played with making it a super small push box here but I'm just trying to show you guys a couple of examples so you guys can just copy and paste it from your help tab here and then go and create your own buttons for your creations so let's update that guy there and let's see if our box is a lot smaller this time yep that's a little tiny box that we have a little bit of a problem clicking but oh, we get it in there still so that is still a working button but now that we're done with that, I am going to jump over to the other one, but we're not going to start working on it just yet because I want to show you guys what I've done with the Lua code in here. Don't get freaked out about all that stuff out there. That's just some crazy um, push to toggle stuff um, for switching cameras. But anyway, I'm going to show you guys what I've actually done to create multiple push buttons in here with the touchscreen for that monitor and if you guys do want to actually just pick this thing up on the workshop the link will be down below so you can learn by example but uh if you don't want to do that and you want to hear me blabble about this uh stay tuned because i'm going to be running through this real quick now so you guys probably do see a lot of common stuff between the single button and the one with four buttons here as you can see, the single button had these three guys up here that is pressing with that and value. We have this that is returning our true value and helping us out up here. And then we have this if then else statement that is drawing the rectangle and then the filled rectangle when you click it. But as you can see, we've changed around a few values here because instead of just doing one, I've just copied and pasted and done four of them here. And when you do this, you do need to create some different values here because you see I've done is pressing rectangle, is pressing rectangle two, three, and four. 
and we've got the same down here as well. And then our output values, since we are using channels one through four here, we have to use five, six, and seven here to output our is pressing rectangles. And that does help me switch around the cameras on the outside there when a button is pressed. So we also do have to have four of these is pointing in rectangle functions. I know I got on a little bit out of order. It's two, one, three, four, but oh well, who's counting? That's that's correct counting, right? Two, one, three, four. No, uh, I'm just joking. And then we also do have four of the functions. So all I've really done here is copy and paste everything multiple times for all of these. And it's not exactly so difficult. It may be a little bit challenging to get everything working properly, getting all the values to line up because you got to make sure you have all of these values correct. And then, like I was talking about earlier, changing the size of those blocks there, the pushable blocks, you have to make sure the X and Y values are exact for all of these values here and the same down here with the same numbers as well. That took me a little while to figure out spacing and everything for and I messed it up a few times, but just make sure all of these values and the numbers corresponding with it. Like if you've got is pointing, is pressing rectangle, is pointing rectangle at 1035, you go down here, we've got is pressing rectangle, and we've got it at the X and Y of 10 and 35. So make sure all of those match up and you should be fine to have a working module here. And now I'm gonna move on to working on the actual camera thing so hopefully you guys do understand a little bit better the touchscreen mechanics for it it's a big copy and paste there um it shouldn't be hopefully it shouldn't be so difficult but if you guys do have any problems with it any issues can't get it working for yourself leave a comment down below i'm happy to help or with in the community discord. I don't know why I said with there. But anyways, I'm going to jump into this one. And I've already gone through the Lua code. All we're doing for this guy, creating four push buttons, is copying, pasting on different, just numbers, different values and everything. So we've got four separate buttons here. Now the really big thing, this craziness right here, I'm probably gonna lose a few people here if not, all of my viewers but thank you for sticking with me because this craziness is a little bit insane it took me a few hours to actually figure out what I was doing here because I've got push buttons here so the original version I did had um, the on off values here running reading that composite value from the Lua script with the push buttons on the screen. So it was interpreting the touch screen and writing it out to on off values. And what was happening was that you would push the button and it would switch the camera. But then when you let go of the button, it would revert back to a black screen or depending on where I put the video switch boxes, it would revert back to the first camera type of deal. So I couldn't get it to stay on the camera I chose, either one, two, three, or four. So what I've done is a JK flip-flop, which actually holds the value of a on or off. So it'll hold an on value until it is reset by something else. So this is where my craziness, I don't know, slightly genius has come in here, where basically um, if it reads an on value from the camera value I wanted it to, let's say, I want to turn on camera 2 which is on our composite read 5 channel I write that to turn on the JK flip-flop here and set it and all the other ones are reset because we have or values like a chain of or values connected to the other three ones here that will actually reset this value reset all three other JK flip-flops so we know they are off and I've got this chain of video switch boxes that all the uh, the ones previous are set up to the off value for the one above it. Except, well, um, camera four just, well no, camera four does go into it. Camera one switch box goes into our Lewis script and outputs behind those buttons there. But, as you can see, we have all of the direct cameras on the on values off of going there so when we turn this guy on this jk flip-flop is turned on we go to camera 3 value that goes through the off values and is run into the lua script and out to our monitor there 
So, I mean, there might be some way of doing this a bit better. Of course, if you did a toggle button on the screen, that would be a lot easier. But to be perfectly honest with you guys, I have a little trouble actually creating a toggle button. I've done it once or twice, but it's a little bit... Um, well, the way I did it was a little bit bulky in Lua code and everything. So I've been playing around with making it a little bit better. I know there are different ways to do it, especially with code. There's a million different ways to do one thing. So I don't know. I've been trying to look around, seeing how other people are doing their toggle buttons in Lua code. And I'm interested to see if I can make mine a little bit better. It just fell over. Well, interesting. All right, let's just make that there. But yeah, that is the touchscreen, the security tutorial, and our touchscreen tutorial here. So of course, if you guys do want to pick this up, it will be on that workshop, of course. And um, if you guys do have any questions about this, about the touchscreen, like I said earlier, comments down below or the Discord. But yeah, uh, you guys can use this microcontroller for any boats you want to use, put a security system, like a huge yacht or something. I uh, just ask if you put like my name in your description, like, oh, you use Storm Runner's microcontroller for the security camera system on the boat. But you can slap this on a security room, on the control deck of your ship, and it should be a perfect use. You can slap on a couple more buttons there, because we're only using... 2,000 of the 4,000 characters in that Lewis script. But I think I've run my mouth a little bit too much here today. I think it's going to dry out here in a second like some cocoa leaves out in the sun or something. But anyways, yeah, that is where I will be ending it. Hopefully you guys have found something informative, something new, something different you didn't know about the touchscreens. Or you're figuring out for the first time yourself how to do this. So happy Stormworks thing. That's a weird inch weird outro eh anyways so of course if you guys did like this please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel to stay up with stormworks and more of my content but i've never been great goodbye so people need me and i need to go